Welcome to a Mike Morton interview on the future of Business Central. Hey, I'm Eric, and um, now conference season 2023 is over, um, and I manage in North Carolina and Charlotte at the Community Summit uh, conference to uh, have a chat on camera with uh, Mike Morton, who is the head of Business Central, and we covered a lot of different topic topics. Um, so I hope you're gonna enjoy this uh, this interview with him. I'm just gonna warn you. Uh, up front that we ran into this weird thing where that the the aircon the room had like a weird background noise like a almost white noise kind of thing and our brains have the tendency to ignore that uh, but our microphones did not uh, so i have tried with the uh, with eqs and ai noise removal tools to to clean up uh, the sound the best I can but there is this background noise and I'm, I'm really annoyed about it uh, which is why this video is not is coming out now and not two weeks ago um, but I think the conversation was interesting enough so that you can uh, you can see pass here past the uh, the weird background noise. anyway uh, I will uh, hand this over to uh, to past Eric in uh, North Carolina and um, enjoy the interview. Thank you, Mike, for uh, showing up again for one of my uh, uh, silly little videos here uh, on YouTube. Uh, we are in Charlotte, North Carolina, at the Community Summit, I guess, the official yeah. title conference, a title, a, not a title, but a conference mainly focused at end users. I think there's a, even a tagline saying by end users, for end users, something like that, because we got a lot of users speaking here about it. not only the central, but all the other kind of products that are involved with. So you guys are mainly dealing with us, and us, I mean, the partners, so now you're here at the end user conference, how's that? Uh, it's fantastic. Um, you're right. You know, I. I do attend a fair number of conferences. I have, you know, lots of conversations um, uh, with partners, um, and, and sometimes I have conversations with customers as well. But they typically tend to be the larger customers that, you know, have relationships with Microsoft. Um, and being at an event like this is, is really one of the few times a year um, I can talk to lots of customers of a very uh, diverse nature. Uh, you know, customers that are of, you know, small sizes, mid sizes, large sizes, different industries. Uh, and it's, uh, you know, it's, it's not just a lot of fun for me to hear from them, but very impactful. I think that, um, you know, no offense to partners, but when we hear feedback from partners, we often hear a certain perspective. <laughs> it's filtered. You know, it's filtered, yes. And when you hear from customers, um, you know, you get a different set of issues. And, and not necessarily, you know, there's a lot of overlap, but you definitely get a different, I'll say, perspective on sort of the set of issues. Um, and it's just been really valuable. Um, but, you know, and really, I'll say, um, helps me sort of feel motivated for my job, to see people that are using the software day in, day out, um, you know, to see where it really helps them with their job, where they have uh, struggles, you know, making sure we can work harder to make it you know, faster and more efficient. And, and I think also there's, there's this dimension that the end users here are actually the end users on the keyboard. Yes. Those are the, the ones that are using it, not yes. just the boss or something like that. It's actually the, the end users and what I have found is that they come with real questions. Uh, I don't know if you get a chance to uh, to chat with some of those users. Uh, yeah, no, it, it is interesting because they, you know, uh, yeah, they often will have very great depth on the part of the product that they work on, um, and you know, they'll, they'll frequently stop me on, on some of their questions. Um, and uh, uh, you know, I think the. Um, uh, it is just really interesting all the different sort of use cases, right? When you see. Uh, you know, it's one thing to kind of have the product and the sort of core capabilities, but you understand their workflows, what they're actually going through. Um, you just have an appreciation of how the, the products connect in sort of different ways. Um, and, you know, even an example of Microsoft, you know, we have our own divisions, but if, you know, a customer is using, um, you know, Business Central and it works with Power Platform and it connects to 365 sales, you know, they don't care that those are three different divisions, you know, they just care that scenario works. <laughs> um, and it's, you know, very interesting to, to talk with them. So over your conversations, all of these past few days, what are you bringing home to your, well, to Copenhagen in this case, what are you bringing home to a business central department organization? 
Yeah, the, 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 there's certainly a bunch of themes. You know, I think the, you know, let me just start with uh, core ERP. <laughs> you know, our, our team, you know, we have incredible depth in our finance and supply chain and manufacturing and warehousing capabilities, um, but there's always going to be gaps. And so I think the, uh, you know, sometimes we get very excited about, you know, the latest office integration and our AI or maybe something else on those lines. And, you know, our team needs to always make sure that we're focused on, you know, end user driven feedback ideas. Um, sort of the core fundamental part of you know, part of what made sort of BC great. Um, I'll kind of flip it around in the space of AI. Um, you know, when you talk to customers today, uh, there is a lot of excitement about AI. Uh, I'll say also a lot of confusion. You know, I don't say confusion is the right term, just uncertainty. You know, they're like, it sounds great. You know, I think it could do amazing things. Um, expectations vary from like, you know, almost nothing to it's going to like radically change everything. Um, and I think for us, we have a lot of work to do to. Uh, figure out how we bring it in a way that the customers understand, they trust, um, they value. Um, and so I think there is uh, immense opportunity in the space of AI, but clearly there's going to be a, a journey in terms of how we do it in a way that um, you know, makes sense for customers and, and what they're trying to do and how they use it. Um, but I, I think you know, we get excited over technology, and yeah. at some point it has to become practical. Yep. Uh, and we, I think that right now we have a couple of Tech demos of, yeah. of AI inside Business Central, but we have very the, well in DC twenty three we have the bank uh, bank rate. Yeah, that, that's, that's great because that's kind of the first truly practical piece. Uh, I you know the all respect for the uh, the create marketing yeah. text thing, but it's 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 I, I see them more as a a, a flashy way of, of showing what you can do. Sure. but but the, the bank rates you know that that will save people time. Yeah, that, that's a that's a real use. And and it's stuff like that that I hope would come more and more. Yeah, absolutely. And, and so one of the ways that I like to talk about AI and business central is, you know, what we're not doing is saying, hey, we have this technology AI. You know, what are all the ways that we can sprinkle AI across the product? Instead, we're saying, what are the core problems our customers are creating? What are the core jobs to be done? As sometimes it's term that people are using business central, right? They're trying to. Um, you know, connect with their customers, you know, create sales quotes, post invoices, um, you know, manage their finances, manage their supply chain, manage their warehouses. Um, take a look at all the things that people are doing and think about how can AI make those tasks more efficient. Um, bank reconciliation is, is a really great example. You know, I hope that, you know, it's a task that almost all customers do and, and you know, we can automate that. Um, and then kind of go through each one. You know, think about the process of, of creating quotes, of um, doing collections, you know, all these sort of scenarios, uh, connecting with customers, um, and trying to make each one of those sort of more efficient. So we're really going to try to take a very customer-centric lens, and I think we'll, uh, we'll surprise people at about how um, valuable this sort of generation of AI is going to be in these sort of core you know, ERP tasks. Excellent. So you, you, we had a couple of, uh, the, the, now I think the problem now that that AI is suddenly Synonymous with the, the open AI initiative and, uh, and the large language models and all those things, but we actually have it. We have AI in, in the product for for years with yeah. the, 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 the forecasting pieces yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. 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 Uh, so, is there a merger coming of those uh, other AI technologies yeah. with the new things? Yeah, I, you know, I think that there will be. So, you know, some of the scenarios that we've had in the past, and I'll just say generic. This, this is both for BC and for industry at large. You know, most of them depended, you know, prior to this sort of, you know, open AI or sort of new generation um, on building these models based on historical data. And so you'd have to take a whole bunch of historical data, train an ML model, um, and then run something against that. And that can work extraordinarily well when you have large amounts of data to run that against and you have the right, um, you know, set up those right configurations that can be quite powerful. Uh, with sort of new this generation is that you, you can do this sort of, you know, we call it zero shot or you know, one shot where instead of having to train with a ton of data, you, know, you have this sort of world of information on the internet or you know, now sort of these models to sort of start from. And so it's going to make it much more democratized. And so I think the scenarios that you discussed, like you know, you know, forecast or demand prediction or late payments or um, cash flow and prediction and analysis, uh, those will very much remain the same. Um, and some of the, you know, a lot of that will still take a lot of historical data and train it. Uh, but now we can sort of combine that with just sort of these base models to provide, uh, you know, much, uh, you know, faster times results. What about if we go into uh, creation of data? Uh, like, 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 I, I, I'll, I'll, I need to create a quote. 
for a customer? And, and can, it, can we get to a point where, where you know, the AI engine will have knowledge about the customer, have knowledge about my items, and figure out what is the best combination to sell, and prices, and stuff like that. Is, is that where we're getting? Yeah, maybe. Do you want a job as a product manager on the, on the team? Um, I mean, you're, you're absolutely headed up the right path, right? I mean, if you just, just think about that, that core scenario. I'm creating a sales quote, right? Just think about the information that, that we might already have. Right? You might have already had um, emails back and forth with the customer. Um, you might have information about what the customer has purchased historically. Um, you might have information about other things sold to different customers, like it just may be this time of year we sell a bunch of these other kinds of products. And you know, today, uh, and, and this is one of the key things actually about AI, is that it's, uh, don't necessarily think about it as um, you know, auto-complete, think about it as auto-suggest, right? So I go and create a sales line. You know, we might not know exactly what you want, but we might have a very high probability um, of what that is. And so you might be able to look at that information and say, you know, hey, we're going to fill in what we think is sort of the most likely things. And then you can say, yes, 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 no, you can get that one right and sort of correct it. Um, you know, if you're a coder, <laughs> um, let me use um, GitHub Copilot. There, there are developers out here as an example, right? Um, when you use GitHub Copilot today, as you're typing, it often suggests lots of code. Um, often, much of that code isn't quite right. <laughs> um, uh, but uh, at least as a, as a newer developer myself, maybe not an expert like Eric, um, it's super helpful and just for giving you inspiration. You know, these are the methods I should look at. You know, these are sort of example patterns. Um, and I think it's going to be similar where uh, you know, people will learn that the power of having these sort of suggestions. Uh, you know, we have just a, um, you know, another example we you know, used um, you know, creating a sales flow, like item, item categories, right? Oh, yeah. um, you know, you create a new, you know, let's say we're going to be selling um, you know, laptops. I'm just going to pick something easy, right? We have to create categories. Like, really quickly can be like, okay, category should maybe be like processor, memory, you know, disk space, screen size, you know, all the things that, that kind of make sense. Um, and uh, that can just be done over and over. And so even when you're uh, going to fill something out, you might have information, maybe you take a picture of the item that can pre-fill some of that information. And so these scenarios uh, are, are quite, uh, um, uh, you, know, you know, I'll say, um, quite omnipresent. Um, and even just to go back to an old scenario, like, you know, a scenario that's been from the beginning of time would be, you know, OCR, or I take a picture of a printed thing and sort of convert that. Um, and that's always been based on, you know, how good is, is you know, the OCR reading it, how quality is the thing. Now that we actually have this context, you know, if we can't quite read something, it might know that information about that customer and sort of guess, hey, they meant the Amsterdam chair, even though the OCR only got, you know, a tiny bit of that. Yeah, but I, and, and actually on OCR, I think there's an opportunity to get rid of all the setup with where on the page something yeah. is, because <laughs> there's contextual uh, understanding of the stuff, totally. Uh, but let me let me switch topics on you sure. from something that is the the, the, the bright future to a, a more troublesome future, future a GP, yeah. uh, which there's a lot of there's a lot of GP customers here at the conference. There's a lot of GP customers who are still in doubt of should they stay on GP? What is what is the path? What what sh what should they do? And 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 there's there's a lot of different opinions yeah. on this. Yeah. Uh, and and I just wanted wanted you to have the opportunity to yeah. give your version without uh, <laughs> all all the drama behind it. Yes, and you know, I don't know if I'd use the word troublesome, but, but there certainly has been drama. You know, there, there's, you know, one thing, there's no doubt that, that GP has been a great product. Um, a lot of customers have used it. A lot of customers are very passionate about it. Um, it works well for their company. Um, but the, you know, the position that we have for Microsoft has, has been pretty clear for a while, that our, you know, our major investments are going to be in Business Central um, and finance and supply chain you know, as well for sort of the, the higher end base. Um, and so we are uh, continuing to maintain GP. Uh, we continue to do updates. We, uh, you know, we do the latest regulatory features. We do security. We fix hot fixes. Um, we actually, you know, even add some little features here and there. We um, almost entirely from the, you know, asks from the community. Uh, and so if you're a customer running GP today, um, you know, we definitely don't want you to panic. It's gonna, um, you know, it's gonna continue to run. Microsoft's gonna, um, you know, continue to do these updates for sort of some period of time. Uh, but we do want to be honest, um, you know, with sort of customers and partners that, um, you know, the, the investment, the innovations, the things that we talked about AI, you know, much more um, is going to other products. And so if you are running GP, um, again, no need to panic, but I think that 
uh, it is a good time to start evaluating what your future is going to be. You know, the time goes fast. You know, a lot of people say, oh, "Hey, we're fine for now," um, but you know, you're going to see these these big changes in the space. Um, and so, I, I'd really highly recommend um, you know look at Business Central, um, you know, look at other offerings from Microsoft. So, you, know, you can look at competitors if you want to. Um, but I think that uh, you know it really behooves you know folks running on GP to um, do an evaluation, um, do it on the right time frame for them. Um, we have a ton of great partners that um, have successfully migrated lots of, of GP customers. People get mad if I use the term migrated, moved, re-implemented, whatever you want to use. <laughs> um, but you know, get them on a solution that's sort of working for them. Um, and we're really committed to supporting that GP base. And so we really want to make sure that we do the right thing, um, that they you know, feel that Microsoft has really supported them in their journey. Um, and, and part of that is getting them onto you know, sort of a modern solution that's going to take them for the next you know, 10 or 20 or 50 years from their business. Well, what I have observed here for the last couple of days is in, in PC sessions, there are a fair amount of, of GP customers yeah. there. So I think there's, at least there are PC curious at this point. Yes. Uh, and it's, I want to see all these new things. Uh, and, and there are, um, you know, there are impressions out there that, um, that just, you know, being educated is great. Like certainly, uh, you know, the capabilities that PC has now is different than what we had five years ago than we had, you know, Five years before that, um, and I think the uh, I want to thank the GP community. We've actually added a bunch of great capabilities like statistical accounts, um, allocating items on your, your GL entry, uh, uh, analysis view in, in, in BC, which is sort of based on the smart list concept in GP. Um, and so we, we really are trying to make sure that we have uh, you know the core capabilities that the GP had plus all the great things that BC has. Um, so coming educated about BC is certainly a fantastic start. And I actually think a lot of the BC clients has never been on GP are very excited for some Absolutely. So, so even if you've never heard of GP, like yeah. analysis view, statistical analysis, they're, they're going to be great things, yes. Oh yeah, certainly. Yeah. Um, and allow me to once again just switch the topic from you here. So right now we're seeing with both with FNO and I'm just going to say CRM, uh, that you know, new products are, are spawning out uh, that has really nothing to do with the, the core functionality, it's like standalone products. And, and suddenly that got me thinking that you know, we, with, with Business Central, we have a great platform for, for a lot of things, but right now there's only one application running on Business Central. There, you have, some years back, the invoicing module sure. that you get for uh, Office, E5, or what something, yeah. but that really did never go anywhere. Uh, so are people now, because of PC success, knocking at your door and say, hey Mike, can, can we borrow your technology stack because we want to build something completely different? Um, yeah, it's an interesting question. So I'll, 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 let me address that on a couple of things. I think the, uh, the question about new products overall, so this, I'll, I'll skip the popper part and then I'll get to it, um, is actually a really great strategic topic for Microsoft. Because I think if you, if you actually looked back um, you know, three or four years ago, we actually had a lot more, like we were introducing all these, um, you know, things like, you know, intelligent order management and supply chain center and fraud protection. Uh, and at some point we had so many Dynamics products that are own field and customers that have a very hard time kind of wrapping around it. And so the, you know, to some extent, in terms of our actual go to market, uh, we're trying to sort of really simplify our offering. So the point that it really is, you know, we basically have our, our sales product, um, you know, our service uh, sort of product, which is, you know, customer and field service, um, and then the Power Platform, and then effectively, you know, what we call ERP, where we really do have two products. We have sort of Business Central and sort of the finance and kind of supply chain. Uh, and so we are trying to kind of simplify that, but then within that space, you're right, there's all sorts of, you know, let me call them new capabilities in those products. You know, there's, you know, the, the you know, these drive sales co-pilot, and there's, you know, great new capabilities in, um, you know, sort of supply chain and supply chain part. Um, from a platform point of view, you know, for, for those that are really in sort of the, the tech, well, no, there, there is kind of three platforms, right? There is the uh, Dataverse platform, which is the foundation of our customer engagement and service products. Um, there's the finance and supply chain platform, and, you know, X++, that's sort of part of that. And then there's the, the Business Central platform, which hopefully people watching this know and love. Um, and, and really, all three of those have a pretty bright future. Uh, I think. You know, Dataverse is certainly the most, I'll say, universal at a Microsoft level in terms of, um, you know, people building, um, you know, kind of generic solutions on sort of top of Dataverse. 
Uh, but you know, and, and I think we feel uh, pretty darn good about sort of the BC platform. We really think it is uh, the right platform for the space. It's, it's the platform that uh, you know is the fastest to deploy, so it is flexible, really works at sort of cloud scale, lets us have lots of customers. Um, I think one, you know, I've had many conversations with Bill Gates, I don't know if he watches this video, you know, we've had many times over the years about, you know, hey, can we have a database that you know, spans from running on somebody's local disk and indexing things to running you know, the biggest you know, database systems in the world. And, and nobody's really ever cracked that nut. So, um, I think that we've learned that, that actually having different platforms um, optimized for sort of different segments kind of works very well. Um, and I'll kind of slightly challenge that we, we just have one product. Yes, we have one thing that we sell, BC. Uh, but BC does a lot. BC does. Uh, <laughs> no, also, I, I, I totally agree. Uh, and that's a, um, and you kind of got back to, to the invoicing thing. You know, I think the, that's been a strategic decision and, and one that, um, you know, could be explored over time. But our sort of thought is in the segment, rather than going and trying to sell, you know, four different things separately, uh, we think the sort of concept of a suite with sort of BC um, is the right way to go. And, and I'll make a, a sort of distinction. You know, there could be a world that, you know, we have the core thing and then there's like certain bits that you can add on, like we already can buy additional environments or additional sort of storage. Um, but, you know, we, we hear plenty of feedback that licensing a VC is already sort of complex enough, and so we don't want to necessarily try to split the product in a bunch of ways. Excellent. Yeah. Um, one of the new things that are coming, oh, it, well, it's already here, but from a VC perspective, we kind of feel that it is still coming, is Fabric. Uh, and, and Fabric, is one of the buzzwords. It's not necessarily here, not at, at the conference, not necessarily in the session, there are a few sessions on it, but in the hallways. Yeah. There's lots of chatter, okay, fabric is coming for PCN, yeah? and you guys put a cryptic uh, yes. thing on, on learn about yes. something. Can, can, you, can, you, can you help our, our viewers here with what's going on? Yes. Um, so there, you know, there are a lot of you know data, you know, I'll say challenges, opportunities in business central, right? People want to be able to, um, you know, archive historical data. They want to have huge data lakes. They want to take data from multiple systems and bring them together and do analysis. Um, they want to have tools that run against a consistent system. Um, you know, they want to have common ways that things like Power BI can access data. In you know, Fabric oftentimes kind of gets brought up as sort of like the solution to all problems. Um, and it, it kind of is. <laughs> um, it, it really is, uh, you know, I, I don't want to overstate things, it isn't a solution to all problems, but it really is. Uh, you know, Microsoft really has unified around Fabric um, as this sort of foundational element in terms of how, um, you know, basically how data gets sort of worked with and managed and sort of, you know, uh, uh, you know transformed um, and, and modeled. And so, so for Business Central today, uh, you know, an example is a request we often get is, you know, hey, how do I get my data from Business Central to a data lake? Um, you know, Fabric's gonna give us a way to, to do that, um, you know, that's not gonna be, you know, uh, today we actually have a great open source solution that does that. Um, we actually recommend people using it. We think it's a great solution if you wanna um, do that today. Uh, but Fabric's gonna provide, a, you know, a very long-term sustainable uh, sort of infrastructure for us doing it. Um, you know, it's also gonna provide great ways of, of sort of how you get data in and out of different systems in sort of consistent matter. Um, so we're, um, in, you know, there's, there's things that I can't even discuss today, but our, uh, let me just sort of put the, our passion around that topic of analytics and reporting is huge. Um, I think you have seen things like the uh, analysis view, the new report center that we have, the Excel layouts, and so you've seen a bunch of things that we've done there. Um, and you're gonna see a lot more. And so I think that, you know, uh, I'll be honest, I think if you look at BC, three or four years ago, you would say, hey, a lot of our reports were sort of stuck in the 80s or 90s. You know, they were great, or they were okay. If you wanted, you know, printed documents and PDFs, and probably not even great at that. I'm sure there were other products that did sort of a better job. Um, and, uh, you know, our mission is to sort of take uh, the whole topic of analytics and reporting and make that, um, you know, a place where sort of BC is the absolute leader in that space. Um, now, if you're ISV, so there, there's still going to be a ton of opportunities for in-depth reporting in different industries and, and different depth sort of areas, but you know, core stuff, you want to look at your financials, you want to look at your analytics, um, we want to make that much easier you know, out of the box. Awesome. So, here at the end of this, let's, uh, let's, let's visit a slightly uh, lighter topic. Sure. Uh, I've recently learned that, that you, know, you have been watching this channel and, and starting, yes, yes. Uh, starting <laughs> AL programming. How's that going? 
Um, uh, it's going really well. You know, I, um, you know, I, so I started doing some, some coding myself. You know, the, um, I insisted on not getting any help from my team. So I, um, I went through a process. I'm not going to ask any questions. I'm just going to use, you know, Bing or Google. Uh, you know, started with AL Go and so like, you know, write my first extension. Um, and uh, you know, I took, you know, I took tons of notes. And, you know, the, uh, you know, for folks that know me, I, I do have a decent development background. So like, it's not like I'm, you know, I, I have, you know, done plenty of coding in the past. And, you know, pick your, your language, you know, C, C++, or TypeScript, or C Sharp, or whatever not. Um, and uh, overall, it's been fascinating for me. Um, I think the, uh, you know, there's some basic things, like when I get started, like, you know, object ranges. I'm like, why do we have object ranges? <laughs> like, why do those things exist? Um, and, um, you know, and when I do eventually, you know, I have now talked to my team after my little experiment, I got the answers to a lot of things. Uh, but also, I mean, just powerful things about the model that we have in terms of, you know, how much you can do via metadata, um, you know, the uh, sort of the, uh, the whole experience that I think we have in VS Code has, has been um, uh, quite great. You know, as a, um, you know, it's interesting, at a, actually completely independently, in my personal life, I'm doing learning some Python for some home automation stuff. Um, it's a similar kind of thing where, like, you know, you learn a new thing and, you know, I need to convert an uh, integer to a string or something along those lines. And, like, you, know, you have to kind of go and sort of learn these paths and do different things. Um, and, and I even, uh, and so after, you know, I'll say I built some, some PTEs, um, and I will sort of share the case, but it wasn't just a learning exercise. Um, it was for, we use the term dog food, and so we're trying to use Business Central internally for, um, you know, I'll say tracking some of our engagements. Um, and so I was um, doing a real thing where I was basically, you know, and, and what I was doing was probably not at all rocket science, you know, adding a bunch of fields, you know, changing some views, creating some workflows. Um, uh, but overall, um, super impressed. I mean, I just think the, the work that our modern dev team has done is, is fantastic. Um, and, uh, you know, there's always, I'm, I'm sure you know this, um, you know, I had a good talk with Esben, and people don't know him, he's one of our great folks. And when I gave him my, my list of 20 ideas, almost all of them, he nodded like, good idea, good idea. <laughs> um, but, you know, these things have both compatibility issues, and, you know, it's going to take time. So I, I did hear a rumor, and maybe you can confirm or deny it, that, uh, no, other parts of Microsoft say, hey, what you've done with, with Visual Studio Code and, and the whole yeah. experience have piqued our interest. Can we come and take a look? Is, yes. is this stuff right? <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. I mean, certainly, um, you know, some of our other friends on the other Dynamics products have, have come and talked to us. Um, you know, the, uh, the bet that we made on Visual Studio is a great bet. I mean, I, the, um, you know, if, if you're a developer growing up in this age and just working with that combination of VS Code and Git and, and all those kind of core tools, uh, you know, the, uh, it just all makes sense, right? And, you, know, okay, you know, when you get down to AL, yes, like the language syntax and those things are a little bit different, um, but frankly, that's, I'll say, a relatively small percentage of like the overall coding experience. You know, I quit F5 and I can debug, you know, stuff you do, and it's, it's, it's kind of, an, it's pretty incredible to me, I, you know, just even, um, the seamlessness of debugging, you know, of having your watch rate, like just all the stuff working, you know, the auto complete, just in the way that you would expect, um, you know, knowing what our team has done to make that work is, is, is you know, very uh, Recently, half year or something like that, we onboarded a new developer uh, and he came straight out of university. Um, and sure, he had to learn uh, the Pascal syntax, yes. uh, which is it's not complicated yeah. uh, if you know what the language is. But you know, you get your VS Code and, and you know, productive in, in a couple of weeks. It was, it was quite amazing to see actually. Uh, so the, the, the platform is tremendous. Uh, and, and also, too, we don't want to rest on our laurels. Like, as, as, as all the praise that I said, it still requires, to your point, somebody that has, you know, comfort of building apps in VS Code, right? Um, and that's, you know, a large number of developers. Um, but if you look at, you know, the heritage of Seaside and, and CAL, you know, we want to make it so you can be in the product, you know, click some button and have an environment all set up for you so you can just start doing, you know, things right there. So we still have, have room to really, uh, you know, even decrease the learning curve in terms of getting started. I, th I think at this point the biggest learning curve is actually the application itself. So yes. I, there, there is so much functionality, so much knowledge in there that um, actually the, the video that is coming out on the channel as we record this is about remember that some fields should never be touched on because 
because their code units that will handle those. Yes. So, so you should never touch them manually. But there's no way, there's no metadata, there's nothing in the system that tells you that don't modify this field directly because there is a secret code unit here, number 414. You need to use that. Yeah. Uh, and, and that's still, you know, and, but it's the same with Python, right? There, Python is it's a simple language, but there's a million libraries that will do all the fancy stuff for you. Yes. Uh, and how do you discover that? Uh, and, and I think we have the same issue here uh, for, you know, how do people actually get this massive application and get the knowledge about that one? Um, so th there are some simpler things, I shouldn't say simple, these are yeah, one of the things that, that we're going to try to do is at least dramatically improve the core documentation of the application. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, that, that's not necessarily going to give sort of the big picture, but we have, you know, plenty of, of methods in the application that the name of the method doesn't necessarily imply all the side effects of the method. Right. Um, and so that's, um, you know, going to be uh, one thing. Um, and then I think, you know, I'll say a second approach is going to be starting to look at, you know, what are the five, 10, 15 most common scenarios and trying to have better, you know, I don't know if it's documentation or tutorials or guides. I know you've probably already, so we appreciate many of the people in the community that go and sort of do that because I think there is a lot of, you know, exactly as you said, that, that there's knowledge in the space. Um, I'll give you a Python example. Like, I went around and wrote a bunch of code and I, I used it using some telnet library and then when I was done, it gave me some warning saying, this library is going to die and you should do it Telnet 3 library, please rewrite your code. And, you know, I can, you know, I'm sure people that are very up to speed in Python like you know, all the stuff that's going on, but it's a similar situation if you're not deep in the space. Uh, and, and I think the other thing that we can do too is sort of help um, you know, connect people with knowledge, right? So if you're a more junior AL developer, um, you know, making sure that you can get mentors or people that have some of the experience and then eventually you, you know, pass on your knowledge to other people. Um, but certainly what we can do for Microsoft in terms of uh, you know, documentation And I think we will, uh, on that note, uh, I would like to say thank you for showing up again. Yep. And uh, I hope we can do this. Uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Know, keep up your great work, you know, about your videos, and uh, yeah, thanks for being a great ambassador of the community. Thank you. And we're back without the, the weird noise. I hope you um, could hear past it. Uh, I will try the next time to. Uh, to figure out a way to record audio better than uh, than we did here uh, but i just want to end this video already thanked uh, microsoft for, uh, for for doing this but i want to thank you because the only reason that somebody like mike will you know sit down and, and talk with me uh, is because you're a subscriber to this channel and uh, the fact that we are now we are now a lot of people on this channel uh, means that uh, Microsoft listens. Uh, so if you have any comments on all the topics that we discussed in the video to Mike, you should put them under the video because Microsoft will read your comments. Uh, I'll read them too. Um, and you know, if you have other questions, there, there, might be a, there might be another interview at some point with better sound quality. Uh, and uh, if you put a great question down there, I will remember it and, and ask it the next time I have a chance. Uh, but if you're craving some uh, some proper ale hacking, uh, just like Mike, uh, go check out this video. It's a good one. I'll see you there. Take care. Bye.